Hey there, Brewberries, what's up and welcome to another episode of Bruin Build. Man, it feels great to say that again. I have missed Bruin Build so much and it feels so good to be back doing this. You know, I love the hardcore world and all that, but there's just something about Bruin Build. Maybe it's because it is literally the only thing we did for like a year and a half to two years. Who knows? Um, yeah, welcome on back. Episode two, super excited. Got some cool things to show you. Namely, looky here. I've been doing a little bit more work on the house, been primarily focused on expansion. As you can see, we've got some more crops. We've got all sorts of new smelty thingies and it's going well, going good. Um, we got all sorts of stuff. So last episode, we built this starter house. This is the style that we are going to be going for. And let me get on up onto this hill so we can get a good look see at it. Ooh, yeah, it is good. There's some blocks on the inside that are just there because but I am super thrilled. So I've been, I've been to the uh, nether, as you can see, because we have some warped fences. Um, this is a much more complete look as to what the build style actually looks like, because you can see the uh, copper has fully patinaed now and ooh man or oxidized or whatever. And it looks so good, especially when you pair it with the warped wood. It's so, 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 so good. And uh, so, yeah, I've been doing some uh, more work here on the landscaping. You can see using some of the smooth basalt, polished basalt, whatever it's called. Uh, then this is, I believe this is regular old deep slate. I almost called it Grimstone, uh, but no, it was gr formerly known as Grimstone. This is a regular old deep slate. And then this is cobbled deep slate. And uh, this is tough. Uh, I have to, man, it is hard for me to come up with the actual words. Um, but yeah, this is tough and I love this combination for the path. So we're going to have this be kind of what the path is laid out as uh, we're going to have very white, bright buildings, and then we're going to have very dark pathways. I think it's going to make a nice contrast inside. You have uh, also this is a fun trick. If you have a build that's supposed to be a little bit more arid, um, uh, say you have a desert build or a build like a coastal build like this. I like to sometimes mix it up and make it so you don't actually have a door. You have a cloth sort of thing, doorway, I guess, a little cloth there. Um, but you don't want zombies and stuff to get in. So what you do is you actually you can put a trap door down and that'll block out zombies from being able to get in. But you see, I can't even get in. But that's because of that carpet block slash that's the moss carpet. Um, you can't get in because this is the perfect height to block all entities, which is awesome. I, I think this will block creepers. I haven't tested it out, been too afraid to test it out, but I'm sure it will be tested at some point. Another update for you is I found dripstone while caving. And so now I have a bit of a dripstone farm going and it's so good. Are, are you attacking me because you were underneath that and you determined that it was a cave or something? I mean, I am flattered that you think that's a cave, but it's not. Um, so yeah, dripstone, got a dripstone sort of thing going. and I really like the texture of it. Not really sure how we're going to use it, uh, but it is definitely uh, slow. So this is going to be expanding over time. I've just been, been kind of going through and chopping it up and uh, putting it down and Slowly just going to. Oh, my gosh. Absolutely not. I swear that dirt texture is like the best texture that I've ever made in my life. I just got to say not to brag or toot my own horn, but I'm going to toot my own horn on this. Look at it. It's so good. Also, in the realm of updates, I have a box here that has a zombie villager in it, and I have named him. I forget what I named him, um, but we have a zombie villager. And so when one more comes, we can actually start populating this place. And I got to get more houses up so they can live. But oh, was there a texture issue there? Mm hmm. I see that. Oh, I think that's the dirt getting on to the grass. Mayhaps. I don't know. Also, look at this. I got an axolotl. And it's going to be so cool to have an axolotl. I'm going to put him in this pool right here. And he's just going to be my friend. Here you go. He's a little yellow guy. Oh, he's so cute. Uh, come back here. No, come back. Come back. No, no, come back. No, 
So the axolotls actually were spawning. You can see that's where I just reused that nether portal and remade it. Um, and uh, the axolotls actually are spawning in the ocean up here, just kind of swimming around. They've actually helped and saved me multiple times because they will attack drowned if they're attacking you, which has been a really actually cool experience because not only have the dolphins been a, a fun little move around quick type of thing, but now I've got axolotls attacking people for me, and it's really great. They also kill the fish, which is um, not necessarily good because they have the entities just... <laughs> to float in there but I, I you know i'll take it i think it's it's a cool so we'll definitely have to make axolotls a part of our build which i do have a good idea as to how to incorporate them so that's fun and continuing in the realm of uh just brief updates as to what in the world i've been doing lots of early game grindy stuff slash also did a bit of exploring around the world just to see if i could find more shipwrecks and the like and I did actually find some. There are so many ocean monuments around this area. Also, there's like there's one there. And I think if we go on the other side of this island, we'll be able to see one right in there, perhaps. Or there is another one. I promise you. Yep, there it is. There's one right there. So we have so many ocean monuments at our disposal. There used to be trees on this land. Uh, I chopped them all down. Uh, this is my uh, copper oxidiz oxidization island. And uh, this is what I was meaning when I was saying that copper can oxidize faster when you place it out. These have sat for like an hour or something like not nearly as long as that house. That house has slabs that have been in the game for prob for like the majority of the time I've been playing. And in that time frame, all of these blocks have actually oxidized. Sorry, I'm like struggling with a burp. It's stuck in my throat, but it keeps going back down in like my chest. Oh, it's awful. So this is uh, if you're wanting oxidized copper more quickly, like fully oxidized, uh, I would recommend doing this because while it is a little bit of a nuisance, you can do this with any of the different oxidized, uh, different copper blocks to get them to oxidize more quickly. Um, and so I've just spaced them out by four blocks. Uh, and so every, I guess, one, two, three, four, five blocks is where I place the copper and just do a grid pattern. And it seems to be working. I mean, they're they're going much, much faster than the uh, other blocks there. The only issue is uh, that I found with them is I accidentally slapped one with my ax and that brought it all the way back a whole step of oxidization, which is a bit of a shame. But you know, that's OK. This is also I'm, I have a feeling that this I've got plans for this island. I've got plans for that island, but I've got plans for this island as well. And I think we're going to have to incorporate some bee nonsense. Maybe the bees will go in that island. I don't know. Um, but I think oh, regardless, we're going to have to definitely get into the bee business because uh, you use beeswax to wax the copper blocks to keep them in the state that you want them in. Now, I got to grab my gold helmet before we go into the nether because, boy, do I have a funny, interesting story to tell you about the nether. So, you know, I didn't record going into the nether outright because it's been done before uh, and we've done it before and it's generally not that exciting. It's usually like, yay, the nether. OK, I'm going to explore for four hours. Uh, well, <clears throat> I went in knowing that and thinking, oh, OK, we're going to go down here and go into the nether. And I was going in to find a nether fortress just so we could find one. I wanted to see if we could get some diamonds and stuff and get just get some stuff, you know, for our for our world and all that. Uh, and so I went in and I did the whole nether fortress, nether fortress searching thing uh, or well, I thought I was going to. So I didn't record, uh, but let's just uh, let's just go just go and see what happens. Yep. <clears throat> so, uh, we spawned on uh, Nether Fortress. Uh, so, it was the quickest I've ever found a Nether Fortress. And uh, I dare say it's probably the quickest I will ever find a Nether Fortress. So, I've already explored it all. I've already tried to find it. But there is one thing I wanted to show you, which is actually really, really cool. Uh, for any of you who are better at the mechanics of the game, you'll have to let me know if this is true or not. Okay, so if we look real quickly, there's a blaze spawner right there. There's a blaze spawner right there. 
Uh, is that close enough to make a double blaze? Oh, bah, bah, bah. Give me with one. You're not that good of a shot. Um, ah, fire. Okay. Um, yeah, so there is a blaze spawner. If we go... Uh, oh, hello. Hello there. Stay. Uh, if we went down that hallway, there's another way of getting there, which would be this way. If we went this way and then back and around, those two areas are actually blaze spawners. And I think they're close enough for us to be able to do a double blaze spawner farm because it's like right there and right there. And I, I, I'm pretty positive that's that's close enough to be able to just sit in the middle and activate them. Uh, so yeah, let's get out of here because I, I don't like being in the Nether in general. I especially don't like being in the Nether when I am only in iron armor. No, <laughs> and that is the Nether. So yeah, that was just funny. I thought that was kind of kind of hilarious. The of course the one time that I decide not nope, not gonna record, I just I miss everything. So that's fun. Uh, what is that over there? Mm, glow licking. So that's good. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's pronounced lichen, but I just kind of like saying licking. I think it sounds hilarious. All right. Last updates, I swear. OK, I can't swear by it because I do actually have more updates. But um, so texture pack changes that are going to be happening. Uh, log textures essentially are going to be losing. Let's see if I can grab a log here. Regular one outside of the birch. Uh, Log textures are going to be losing their darkening on the sides. And the primary reason is because after playing hardcore, I like not having the dark band because you can do a lot more texture variation. That would not work if I also I switched birch in for diorite. If you didn't uh, notice it, uh, that would not work if there was a dark band just simply wouldn't work. Uh, probably would work the least on this block, but it won't work on all the other ones. And I like blending them together. Uh, so we are going to be losing the dark bands. I don't think it's that big of a deal because it still very much feels like a log block. So I think that is a worthy loss for far more texture potential is what I'm thinking of it as. Now I am releasing just for updates. I am releasing a update planning to release an update, I should say. Uh, boy, howdy, look at them stalactites and mites grow. Keep growing. Uh, yeah, so releasing a new texture pack update on or before the 4th of July. Uh, that is my plan. So this hopefully this week. Um, and what I would like to do is also address some weird texture issues. Namely, I think there's just a couple overlays that are whack a duty. Uh, grass is one and then grass on gravel. I just need to remove one or the other. And I will be doing a texture pack update video uh, as well, but that's not going to come until after the 4th of July, uh, just because I don't want to try and uh, bust that out uh, before then. Not like it's going to be that much of a big change or anything, but I just want to go over all of the textures because I haven't done it in a long time. So any of you who are new and are interested in the texture pack, wait until then to get full updates and you can get earlier versions, I guess, uh, if you're too anxious to get them, uh, you can get earlier versions um, on my Patreon, uh, but I will definitely be making more content video wise on that uh, in the very near future because I want to give you an update here soon. All right. So oh, all of that stuff out of the way. Jeez, I've been having so much fun in this world that I have so many updates to give you. Um, I have been thinking about what we're going to be doing today as I should, considering we're making videos here. Um, what we're going to be making today is actually, I've already crafted it, and that would be the enchanting table. But namely, the thing that is going to be centered around the enchanting table, which is our enchanting station area. Uh, I have a cool idea. It's going to require some work that is going to predominantly be done in a time lapse. And so a lot the reason for that is I you may not hear it, but I am actually uh, having to take some off breaks slash, slash take dr drink breaks. Uh, because I currently have some bad allergies going on and I just simply can't talk for a super, super long time without getting like a really dry throat and then just hacking up my lungs. So uh, because of that, I'm just going to do a time lapse. I may do a talkie time lapse, but it makes it so it's easier for me to be to just 
do focus on the building and then focus on the talking separately. So I'm going to be doing most of the building today in a time lapse form. Um, but what I wanted to say is I have been wanting to bring lore back into this series uh, in a much more impactful way. Um, I think Sarthal levels of in season one, Sarthal was our most lore driven town. And that is what I want to get into for all of our builds in this world. Um, and so I have been thinking long and hard about what in the world this island's lore is going to be still developing it. And it's uh, still like we're not going to go like exceptionally deep into it, but it's going to be really nice. I think it's going to be a really, really cool concept. And it has to do with this island interconnecting with that island over there. Um, and it's also going to play a role into the nether area that's down here. And so I'm just very excited. I will be talking about that in the time lapse uh, itself because it's just way easier for me to do all of the talking. Even if I have to take cough breaks, I can do all the talking. Uh, with all those breaks and stuff just separately. Uh, so that's why we're going to be doing it that way. Um, and so primarily what I want to do for this build is it's going to be up on yonder window break. It's going to be up on this here hill. And um, what's going to be happening is we're going to make similar to actually hardcore. We made a pavilion type thing. We're going to make a pavilion on this level here, or potentially I may lower it down to that level. Uh, this whole island is going to actually be up to, I think that level right there is where the lowest is going to be. So all of this is going to be up higher because I want, I, the, it doesn't make sense for the island necessarily to have all low spots on the edges. Uh, so it's going to be kind of cliffy on the sides here. Um, and so going to bring all of this up. Uh, and so this will not actually feel nearly as tall from the ground itself, like this ground here. And so we're going to have like a little pavilion type thing here. But the purpose of it is actually to bring you over here. And as you either walk through it or around it, uh, what I'd like to do is make a little pathway that kind of goes down because this is all going to be kind of cliffside. Um, what I'd like to do is like make a pathway that kind of goes down and wraps around to down around here. And then down here is actually going to be a exposed geode cave. And that is where we're going to put our enchanting station. Um, and maybe like a hermit lives there that has an enchanting setup. I, I don't know. I think that sounds really cool. I think it kind of sounds like a fun thing, like a little tucked away thing that people know, like, oh, if you need some magical goods and stuff, go visit the hermit. Um, and I think it'll be a really cool incorporation of the crystals, calcite and all that stuff, because I believe I have some. Yeah, I do have some. Actually, I wanted to take some of this, some of this and craft up one of these guys. Ooh, what is this? Whoa, so long Optifine Zoom. Actually, honestly, I may because this is now in the game, I may actually. Oh, never mind. You can zoom zoom oh man that's sick double zoom Ow, see yeah you like my cigar see i guess if you look up it doesn't <laughs> keep it to your eye kind of looks like a big old cigar but if you bring it back down there <laughs> there we go that one is age appropriate but I think that is enough nonsense from me. I'm just blabbing at this point. Let's go ahead and get on into the build and talk a bit more about the lore to build this place up around because boy, have I been thinking about it. So let's get on in to the time lapse. All right, for this time lapse talk, I am one feeling much better in terms of my throat. So hopefully I'll be able to get through this all in one shot. If not, you'll never notice. So what I wanted to first start out talking about is I wanted to talk about this starter island and what it is exactly that I'm doing currently. Like you just saw something flash on the screen there and we're gonna take a look at that more. Um, I wanted to look at the starter layout of the town and what I was kind of thinking. So I initially made a very rough sketch of what exactly we were gonna be doing for the town. Um, some of it changed over time, but the idea is that the as the island progresses backwards, it also goes up in height. Um, and then we're gonna have kind of this just general road structure in place. Uh, but then I decided to get into a bit of a 
rougher concept sketch. Uh, and so this rough concept sketch is what the island actually will eventually look like to s look like to some degree. Um, still obviously going to be a work in progress, but this is a really nice way for me to easily portray what I'm thinking. Uh, and this is something I did before in season one for our, our big giant landscape concept, but it works actually really well for something smaller because it's more manageable to do. Uh, and I actually, I, I don't know, I had a really fun time doing it. So this is kind of the concept sketch we're going for. This island's gonna have one big old windmill in the back that is gonna be used for some things that I will talk about in just a second. And so this island is going to be connected up actually to the other island, the one that we're putting copper on, or what I keep calling Copper Island. They're both gonna be connected up in the lore between them. So the idea is that they were once a part of the same island but some event occurred to cause the middle section of the island to fall down or to be flooded over by water and so maybe it used to be a part of a bigger bigger landscape but then the seas rose pretty rapidly and over time took over the actual town itself in the middle and these two kind of mountaintop areas are the last sections that are surviving and this is the kind of where these small towns are thriving now. So the major differences between the islands. So Copper Island is actually going to be more technologically advanced in how they are harvesting wind. Both of them are going to be themed around wind harvesting with the windmills, but Copper Island is going to be the, they're going to be the smaller but yet more advanced civilization from the two. Both themed around the same similar building style, maybe a little bit of differences here and there, but Copper Island is going to be the more advanced section. So they'll have actually smaller, more efficient windmills rather than one gigantic one. And they'll actually be used to collect energy uh, rather than being used for grinding up stuff. And they're gonna be leaning more into what I'm kind of calling a wind punk theme, uh, similar to like steampunk, but is more just about gathering wind energy and converting it instead of steam, so wind punk. They're gonna be doing that on top of the Cycladic architecture style. And then the starter island we're on is that going to be more regressed in technology. And so they're gonna have one primary windmill for running major grind mills that are gonna be housed kind of around it. Uh, so it's gonna be more around, it's gonna have like sort of energy consumption, but it's gonna be in a much more limited state. And so this island's gonna be centered more around oceanic trade rather than sort of civilization advancement, if that makes sense. And now some of you may be wondering, what about the sunken section? Well, the sunken section of the cities is gonna be where we focus more on the magical qualities of the game that I think will be kind of interesting to explore. Uh, and so it'll be able to explain why in the world there's like another portal that's still down there. And so it's still, I still want it to be fully explorable and still be like lore driven of like, if you're equipped with the proper materials that maybe either town sells, uh, that you can actually go down and be perfectly safe exploring the sunken city and that maybe it's actually even being used by certain people and that they have kind of some magical technology, magical or technology advancements that have made it so they can still live down there. I think that'd be kind of really cool. And so maybe using conduits to enable travel between the two islands via underwater or using Frostwalker to be able to quickly travel between the islands um, and follow kind of maybe like a buoy system or something to lay out where a safe travel path is since you are going to be having to walk on the actual water itself. I don't know, I think it's something that's a, a cool concept to explore, but that's that's kind of what I'm going for. These two islands are gonna be connected up in a much deeper lore, um, and then it's gonna be just more explaining why these islands are here, and we're not really getting into any of the like game mechanics yet, uh, because I think that will be for other islands. We can explore as to why there are mobs in the game and stuff like that, similar to what we did in season one, but coming up with some more new, fresh, lore. But that's all I've got time for in this time lapse. Let me go ahead and hand you on back to future me so that we can continue exploring what in the world we just built. Alrighty, I hope you enjoyed that time lapse. I am just Coming over here right quick to Copper Island to be placing down these last slabs. Oh, hey there, buddy. I'll get out of your hair. A fun thing about Frostwalker is at night, it's really handy. Uh, at night, 
I just have been doing this. I run over there and then I just zoom my way across and pick up the boat. Now that some ex stuff has been done in here uh, in between uh, last clip and now, uh, basically I just moved everything that was out here, I moved into here. And uh, so we've got all our cooking stuff. I expanded and made a basement for extra storage. Uh, obviously this is not finished, but the idea is that eventually that will be kind of like a little, have a little dock area budding out of it. And so it'll kind of like be an extension of this house down below. And I think it'll be interesting. A um, couple of fun things. I found another villager down in the caves, managed to lead him all the way up, zombie villager. And now as you hear, I have changed him and brought the other guy up to here. And so we have two villagers ready to go, which is awesome. Now, all this land is brand spanking new, as you can tell. And as you also can tell, is hollow under there. We will work out the sort of shell here later on uh, to make it actually feel like an island. But this is more what we're going to be doing. And I wanted to rework the island and make it more interesting. There's going to be kind of a heavy duty dock that kind of comes off of this as well. So much more terraforming in our future. But for now, this is good. I am really enjoying how this is going. And so as you can kind of see, we've got a little bit of a pathway starting to work out here. And so we've got the path that will come around here. I think it's going to wrap around and go up this way to this uh, little house. And we're going to have like a wheat field here. Then we're going to have another field of crops here. And so this is going to be like crop central in the front area. Then there's going to be like a big dock area here. And I think it's going to look good. It's going to be big in proportion to, I guess, the town itself. The town's not going to be massive or anything, but I think the, the dock will be interesting. I have some interesting block palette choices for it, which I, I'm excited to work in. This is going to be a our primary house, I think, or we're going to make it into a sort of dock registration area. I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, we'll figure it out. But let's look at what we did today, what the purpose of today was, and that was to make well that which is slowly coming along. We're going to leave this around here. Um, we're going to let the copper age and then uh, this was not really the main purpose. The main show is on the other side of that cliff. But the idea is you kind of can walk up here. Eventually we'll have a nice smooth walkway all the way up. And then I wanted this flat area to be kind of like a park. Um, and so we're going to have this little pavilion type thing. Uh, and then there will be maybe some chairs, maybe nothing. I don't really know. Um, but this is going to be a pod. It is literally the exact shape of this little area here. And so it's going to be a pond. I think it's going to be good. And then this hillside is going to continue on up. That's about as tall as it's going to get. And so if we get up there, this is roughly how big it's going to be. And it's going to extend all the way over there. I think this is going to connect up more to here. So we're going to have a little bit of terraforming to do just to make it a little bit bigger, but not too much bigger. Um, and then the rest of this area here, uh, I'm thinking this is going to connect up over here as well, just to round it out a little bit. Uh, and so that's all going to be roughly on this level, like that level right there, or I should do this. It's going to be roughly on that level right there. Uh, and so that's going to be nice. This little area here will also extend out a little there. And overall, it's just going to be all raised up. But if you walk through here, you come on through, you can walk through the pavilion and then you can get down here into where this path takes you which is where I spent far more time doing the decoration bits and stuff. And so we we're going to have like a nice pathway down to a natural hillside to a gym cave with our enchanting setup. I just love this exposed geode look and feel. I think it looks really, really cool. Also, this I do need to change this texture. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to make it into the update, um, but I will try my best. It just needs to be adjusted slightly to match the, heat, the actual sand. But look at this. Isn't this really pretty? I love the new azalea tree bush things, and I love the crystals. I think so good. And you can harvest them at different levels, which is really awesome. And so we can come in here and have our enchanting setup that is level 30. Ooh, sharpness three. Not that great. 
Um, but you can have that. I've got the grindstone, got some stuff here for it. Overall, looking really, really cool. And I'm so, so pleased. Also, look at this. This is what I'm going to be doing all around. On the base, I'm going to use Deep Slate because, uh, you know, like rocks look excessively darker um, when they are wet. And so we're going to be using Tough and Deep Slate to emulate like where the tide kind of splashes up and hits the rock. I think that's going to look really good. And then the Tough is going to continue up into the cliffside itself. But overall, it's going to be more like Deep Slate down below on the outer shell, which I think is going to look Great. Now, I didn't do much else because of the fact that I just really didn't know what this section is going to be. I need to do more planning. Um, and so obviously this is all now floating and stuff, but I think it looks so cool. And so the idea is you'll be able to connect up to uh, the top park area here and also wrap around this. Uh, this pathway is going to go right around this little wheat field or something that's going to be right here. I think that's going to be really nice. So that is going to have to do it for this episode, guys. I hope you have enjoyed and sorry for all the building being in the time lapse form. But with 4th of the July coming up, uh, we are going to be out this entire weekend. And uh, so I wanted to be able to get the episode out, get a lot done, but then also be able to enjoy the weekend. So next week may be light on videos in terms of it being just like a texture pack update video but who knows maybe i'll also get the world tour of season one's world in there at some point i don't know but thank you guys so much for watching if you have enjoyed please feel free to leave a like on the video and if you are new here feel free to subscribe and join the little family we've got going here and i will see you guys in the next episode uh, bye bye